If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding-edge tools and tactics to micro-fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, hey, welcome to the conversation, CEO Mischief Makers, MKJ here, and I really can't wait to introduce this next gentleman to you because I've wanted to talk about these concepts with him for a long time because he has repeated success at least three times that I know of, and I'm sure many other times since. So welcome to the conversation, Nathan Hirsch. Nathan, how are you doing? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? I, you know, I woke up today. So it's an incredible day. Uh, so yeah, I'm doing really well. So all right. I have been uh, following Nathan's footsteps. Uh, didn't really know who he was when I first started using his first product that I knew of, which is FreeUp. Um, and I've been just basically in awe of your ability to systematically create things that are useful and helpful to others and at the same time successful. So start with what you do now and uh, introduce yourself to, uh, to all the mischief makers in the audience. Yeah. So, so I own two companies now. One is Outsource School, which I know you're a member of, um, where we teach our hiring process. We have a, a unique hiring process for interviewing, onboarding, training, and managing virtual assistants that, that we've used for 10 years now. Um, and my newest venture, which is only six months old at the time of recording this, is Ecom Balance, which is a, a monthly bookkeeping service for e-commerce sellers and other online businesses where we do your books, books on time every single month and give you reports that you can easily understand and, and make decisions on as well as help you get funding or investments or sell your business uh, with immaculate books. But before starting these two companies, uh, I was a 20-year-old college student looking for uh, extra beer money and, and I came across Amazon and I started buying and selling books, eventually textbooks, from there, I found baby products somehow uh, through a lot of different trial and error and ended up selling $25 million, a lot of it out of my college dorm room, although I graduated halfway through the, the company um, and, and grew that business with my business partner, Connor, who was one of my, my first employees that, that I hired um, back in college. So we scaled this Amazon business using a lot of virtual assistants and freelancers. We, we never launched our own brand. We, we got really good at drop shipping back in, uh, this was 2008 to 2015. So Amazon has changed a lot since then. But as Amazon became more competitive and we didn't really have any ideas to, to launch our own brand, we started leasing out these VAs and freelancers to other Amazon sellers and, and Shopify sellers. And we start, ended up turning that into a marketplace called FreeUp that we launched with an initial $5,000 investment, did a million dollars in the first year, five in the second, nine in the third, 12 million in the fourth before being acquired by, by one of our clients, uh, the Hoth, which is a whole nother story that, that we can get into if you want. But that's kind of, those are the four businesses that I've started along with, of course, failures in between. Um, but I was an Amazon seller. I ran free up for four years and now I run outsource school and an econ balance. So that's what I think, it, okay, let me just say this. I'm just gonna make this statement because this is one of my biggest struggles in life in general and especially in business. Happened to me this morning. Uh, every, every, whenever something happens, uh, you know, something either doesn't go right or, you know, something didn't happen exactly the way I thought it should, I get this immediate feeling. It's it's just a stupid feeling. It's, an, it's a feeling in my stomach, right? And, and I... In the past, I used to give in to that feeling and just let it wash over me, let it come over and like, yes, I'm not doing right. I'm just not as good as I thought I it was all that baloney, right? I'm getting much better. And you, my friend, are at the top of my mind every time something like that happens, you and a couple of other people to just stop and go, dude, shut up. It's just a thing. 
There's no reason to attach an emotion to it. Just go in, do what you got to do, fix it, move on. That's really what I do. And I struggle with that. I still, it gets better and better every single time I handle it. But would you consider that a mindset shift that you were able to make sometime in those four businesses? And that's much easier now to be able to make so that you don't get consumed by those feelings? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not going to pretend like I'm perfect. You go through a lot of ups and downs as an entrepreneur, but it all started. So back in, in the Amazon days, it was about year two or three. And we had gotten this Amazon business to an amazing point. I think we were selling like 300 products a day. We were profiting a thousand dollars a day. I was making more money as a young 20 year old than I ever thought I would. And we had this great supplier. I had finally hired people. I'd spent six months training them. The, the business really would run without me. And I went on my, my first vacation in really two years that I was setting up the, the company and, and I went to Myrtle Beach and, and I'll never go back. On the, the first day of my vacation, I got three phone calls. The, the first was our manufacturer who decided to no longer work with us. They were going to sell products directly. And we had put all our eggs in one basket. They were the only people that we were drop shipping products for. So right there, the entire business model that we had created was gone. Then I got a call from my, my manager who I had taught to do all parts of the business, spent six months training him, telling me that he had decided to quit. He was a college kid. His parents wanted him to focus more on school and, and not on my business. And then just to top it off, and, and I kid you not, same day, I got a call from my accountant that someone had stolen my identity filed a fake tax return in my name, stolen $40,000 from the government. And I was going to have to deal with that nightmare as a, I think I was 21 um, when, when I got back home. So I went from this unbelievable high to I'm this 21 year old who's created a business. I'm not going to get, have to get a real job after college. No one can touch me to everything I just built for two years is gone and I have to start all over again. And, and, and that was completely devastating. I mean, we, we were 21. So we spent the, the remaining of the trip drinking and um, feeling sorry for our, ourselves. I, I was on the trip with my business partner, Connor, but then we got back and we were like, okay, like we have X amount of money in the bank. We've got some other people on our team and we might as well, before we just shut this thing down and go out and get a real job, we might as well try to build it back up. We got nothing else to lose. This is what we like doing. So we ended up getting back and just spending weeks contacting every possible manufacturer that we could. And before it, we had relationships with hundreds of manufacturers drop shipping their products. So the next time that a manufacturer dropped us and it wasn't the, the last time someone dropped us, it wasn't that big of a deal because we were very diversified. And once we had built up these manufacturers, we then started building the team and we said, we're only going to hire people for certain roles, for listing products, for pricing. This was before a lot of Amazon software existed. So everything was very manual. And so we, we specialized people. And the next time someone quit, it wasn't that big of a deal because we had an SOP for that one thing that they were trained how to do. So after that, it, it was kind of like, all right, anytime that we feel like we're on top of the world, let's remember entrepreneurship is humbling and there's going to be a lot of failures. And anytime something bad happens, just remember, like, you're not going to be homeless. You're, it's a problem that you're going to be able to solve. And that's kind of how we've looked at, at everything going forward. And last thing, and then I'll kind of send it back to you, even starting business today, like just because I sold on Amazon and started free out. Um, does not mean future businesses are successful. I tell my, my family and my friends outside of business that all the time, like, like entrepreneurship is hard. You can have a great idea. You can hire great people. You can do everything possible executing and you can still fail. Most businesses fail. So you have to kind of know that, that, that that's just the way entrepreneurship is going forward. Thank you for that. Because that's exactly why I, I, I okay. <clears throat> that mindset didn't just happen. You had to choose to respond to that situation with a, you know, a, well, we're going to have to figure this out before we go get a real job. And that's always kind of the fallback that most entrepreneurs look at that, you know, they're going to have to fall back and have to, uh, you know, figure out how to get a real job, quote unquote. But uh, you, you had to actually make that decision to go, all right, I'm just going to go all in. I'm just going to do this. And I, I have to point on something you also just said, the highs are just as uh, humbling, right? So whether it's a high and you've done some amazing success, I think that the first time I got a, a contract for $30,000 a month with my uh, agency, the first time that happened, it was like I was on top of the world and I, was, I just felt so good about myself and all this kind of, but it's the same concept. It, 
that emotion, yeah, I can be happy, but to tie my identity with that, to tie who I am with whether this business is succeeds or fails, that's where I get stuck. That's where I used to get stuck. And that I've worked on so much since then to just not tie my identity, to celebrate when great things happen, but not to get so down also when things don't go, don't go right. So how did you just develop that? Were you just a 21 year old and you were like, yeah, screw it, whatever. I'm just going to have to figure this out. Or did you have to work with that? No, I mean, I feel like I still work on that. So my business partner is, a, is very calm, cool, and collective. And, and I'm a little bit more high energy, rah, rah. I'll get a little bit more up, a little bit more down. I'm definitely more even keeled than I used to be just because I've gone through a lot of experiences. But we, we feed off each other. And there's days where things don't go right and, and whatever it is. Like one, one of my... One of the things I just hate in any business is disappointing a customer, no matter how big or, or how small. But in the early days of starting every business, you just don't have your processes down. And we try to, to be upfront with people like, hey, you're a beta client. We're going to give you X in return, like bear with us as we train people and we build processes. But you might miss a due date. You might have to redo something. You might have forgotten to ask for something upfront. Like these are all things we went through in the first few months of, of building Econ Balance because we had never run a bookkeeping service before. So stuff like integration or being able to time out projects, we weren't as good at as, as hopefully we are now. So stuff like that still eats at me inside. And, and I always have to talk to my partner and he reminds me like, it's going to be okay. This is part of the process. We got to think long-term. Like the clients understand a lot of our clients from Econ Balance, they use me before that they know that I'm not in it to, to screw them over or to make a quick buck. They, they know what we're trying to, to build. And, and sometimes you, you do need those reminders. So it's always good to kind of have a sounding board. And my wife is a great support system as well. She's been the, through the highs and the lows of she's seen my, my our websites and, and software get hacked back in the free up days. She's seen my Amazon business get suspended and then get unsuspended and then the roller coaster that go with that. So she's kind of seen it all. So she's kind of there to remind me when I'm at the top or at the bottom to, to kind of move back into neutral. That's, that's really it. It is neutral. Um, and it, like I said, anyone listening, it doesn't mean you don't celebrate the highs or feel the devastation of the lows. I really, the way I look at it is I don't identify with either. So the success of my business does not define me as a success. The failure of my business does not, does, does not define me as a failure. That That's the only thing I have to keep looking at, right? I have to really keep reminding myself of. So now I know you are going, in, I know you're doing a lot. I follow you online. So I know you're doing some, some amazing things personally. I mean, you're, you're diving into the world of parenthood. Uh, how, how has your mindset of dealing with these, uh, these business issues helped you to handle that world? <clears throat> yeah. So this is probably how I've changed the, the most personally. So I, I, to give a quick background, I grew up very middle-class. My parents were both teachers, so we weren't poor. There was always food on the table, but we weren't wealthy. And because I lived in, I grew up in East Long Meadow. I went to school in Long Meadow. My dad was a teacher at Long Meadow High School, which was a way better school system than East Long Meadow. And because I got to go to the better school system, Long Meadow is also a much richer town. All my parents' friends were, or all my friends' parents were doctors, lawyers, dentists, entrepreneurs, they had nice cars, they went on nicer vacations, they had the latest video games. So growing up, it was always like, woe is me, like, why don't I have all this stuff as my friends? Um, like, I guess m money or, or things were, were very important. And I think as I've gotten older, and I've kind of met people outside of the, the town of Long Meadow, um, I've been able to understand that there's always people that have more than you, there's definitely people that have less than you. And a lot of the uh, there's so many things that, that well, I mean, growing up in, in the U S opposed to other world country, having food on the table, having loving, loving parents that luckily at the time of filming this are still alive and very healthy and very active. Um, and you kind of take a lot of that, that stuff for granted. And um, my wife turned me on to, to fostering um, about a year and a half ago. And it, not everyone has those, those same, those same chances the, the same upbringing. And th there's just a lot of luck that, that goes involved. I, I have a, a social media post the other day that like every entrepreneur is lucky in their, their own way, whether it's having the right support system or growing up in the right country or getting that, that right timing. Like we got into Amazon at a great time. We got into free up at a great time. So no matter how good you are at, at entrepreneurship or business, there's always that luck around you. So 
thought, and now that now that I appreciate things a lot more and appreciate what my parents worked hard to build and, and how they treated me and um, all the support that they've given me through all the ups and downs, hopefully I'm able to, to give that back in, in a different way to someone else who didn't get that that same opportunity. That's incredible. I mean, really, the uh, your ability to not just your ability to do that, uh, but your willingness to do that is uh, is is really admirable. Um, I just, I just have to say that because it, not everyone has that um, situation or mindset or uh, personal uh, just responsibility around them. And uh, kudos to you and your wife for, for doing that. How's it going so far? It, it's great. It's awesome. Um, we, have, we have a kid with us now. I'm not going to share personal information because that's not yeah. um, fair yeah, yeah. to them, but yeah, yeah. It, it couldn't be going better. And um, we're having a lot of fun as well. I have a, a partner for board games and video games and, and stuff that, that I like to do. And it's been a <laughs> great experience. We're learning a lot as well. It's, it's kind of interesting um, for us being parents of, of like teenagers, not having uh, our own kids uh, at this point. Yeah. So definitely yeah. a unique experience. Wow. That's amazing. You know, I, I just, uh, so many of us, we, we start and I love what you're doing because you're allowing, you're helping people start, uh, you're helping kids start a little ahead of where they would have started if they stayed in situations that they were born into. And that's really what we all have. Hopefully my kids, your, your parents did the same for you, hopefully helping you start a little further along than they did, providing those kinds of opportunities in the best ways they could. And as entrepreneurs, I know you did this same thing with FreeUp, allowing these, uh, these people from all over the world, the US, many other different countries, to have opportunities to work on projects that they would not otherwise have had if they weren't part of your system. You're just continuing that in your private life, actually. I don't know if uh, you've made that connection, but I just made that connection. Um, and to provide that opportunity, the, the mindset to be able to do that, and it's not just all about me, it's about the others around me as well, is it is really a legacy-based mindset. Yeah. And I think one of the things unique to, to Connor and I is we're not a big fan of stuff. Like I, I don't think I'll ever own a, an expensive car or anything like that, even though I could buy it tomorrow if I wanted to, but th that stuff just doesn't interest me. Like I'm fortunate enough to, to live in a nice house and, and have different investments and stuff like that. But what, when we sold free up, like part of the deal that was a deal breaker for us is we wanted our, our team to stick around and to keep their jobs. And we wanted to take $500,000 from the deal and give it to our internal team in, in the Philippines and make sure they were taken care of because we couldn't have grown the business without them. And that's money that, that technically was ours and could have gone into our pocket or whatever. Um, but I mean, that's something important. Like what, what, what am I going to do with that money that, that, that would make me happier than helping the people that were able to, to help me achieve that success. And hopefully with, with fostering, we're able to do the same thing. And it's all about providing people opportunities. Like you can't, you can't hold on someone's hand their, their whole life, but you can present different opportunities and it's up to them to hopefully take advantage of them. Okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted, you were inspired to innovate and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.